All right guys, welcome back. So today, I wanna to talk to you about my RX-7. As you can tell, it's not exactly stock and it's not exactly simple. But the thing is, I love this car. I love it just the way it is. But this is not the right way to do things when you're just getting into drifting and I'm gonna explain why. When I first got this car, it was a 13B rotary engine. It wasn't running. Me and my brother managed to get it running we got it to where it was actually drivable the way that it was. Me and my stupid brain, I was like, oh, you know what would be really awesome in this car? A V8. Who, who doesn't want a V8 swapped RX-7 or a V8 swapped 240 or V8 swap? you name it. V8 swaps are awesome. But here's the thing. They're not simple, they're definitely not cheap, and they're not easy. Now, you could look at this end product and be like, man, this is awesome. And like, I know aesthetically it's not quite there, but it's getting there. But the thing is, is that no matter what you do, you're going to put more money into the car than you plan. You could have the perfect budget, and I promise you, there will be issues. This last year, we spent an entire year of drifting, and I have gotten to drive this thing for an entire event maybe twice without any breakdowns or anything. That's in an entire year. Original part. <laughs> it's about 30 years old. Oh my god. Yeah. That's the thing that's the best. Yeah, that's the piece. Uh oh. Uh oh, no. Hang on. That's ridiculous. For someone who's just starting out drifting, that's not the right way to do things. Now, mind you, I love this car. It's amazing. But there's so many things about it that require so much extra effort and work just to drive. And when your goal is to drift and get better at drifting, you need seat time. And that's something that this makes it very difficult to do. One of the main reasons is because once you take this car, you take the engine out and you're like, man, that looks awesome. I, the possibilities are endless. But that's what gets you, because then you start thinking, you're like, man, what else can I do to this thing? You know, the engine bay looks a little dirty. Maybe I should paint it. So you try to paint it, you do that. Next thing you're thinking, well, what engine do I want to put in here? Well, I found an engine out of a 99 Suburban. It was a V8, dirt cheap, paid $200. All it needed was head gaskets. I could have put head gaskets, got it back together and ran it, dirt cheap. But you know, that's not what I did. Took that engine, tore it down and decided, hey, Let's fully build it, why not? You know, if I'm gonna have a V8 swap car, it better be a badass V8, right? So, you start going down the rabbit hole, right? Oh, it would have been easy if I would have just, you know, maybe kept it low horsepower, put a cheap transmission in it, and ran it. But of course, that's not what I did. I decided, hey, why don't I put a T56 out of a, you know, Corvette or a Camaro in there, and now I've got this Billy badass transmission. That wasn't cheap either. 
you know, and that's that's how it goes. You go down the rabbit hole. It's one thing leads to another. Next, you're looking at wires, and you're like, man, this is a mess. I think I should go and redo the entire wiring system. Of course, because that makes sense. You could have just spliced into it and made it work, but no. So now you're doing an entire wiring harness, which don't let me get started on how difficult that is. The point is, you got to keep things simple when it comes to drifting. The simpler, the better. This car is a great example of what can happen if you have a lot of time and you put a good amount of resources into it, you can definitely make something amazing. But the thing is, you're not gonna be driving it as much as you want to. Now my brother, he has the right idea. He kept it as simple as you possibly can. And well, I'll let him explain it to you. All right guys, what's up? So this is my 93 Miata. This car was my very first car that I ever got. I bought it for $2,200 when I was 16 years old and the initial plan was it like I wanted to drift with it. I knew it was simple because first off, a lot of people see the Miata and they're like, oh it's a girl's car, it's a piece of crap, it's, it's got no power. The thing that they forget is what do you need for drifting? Rear wheel drive. It's rear wheel drive, most of them are manuals, very rarely can you find an automatic and they got about 100 horsepower, maybe a little bit less but it only weighs around 2,000 pounds, which is nothing. So you don't need as much horsepower to have fun. What I did is once I got it, I wanted to turbo it eventually, but instead we got into racing, uh, road racing, and it was simple. Literally, stock Miata, got a seat in it, got an uh, aftermarket racing wheel and quick release, and that was pretty much it. And then some sticky tires up front and rear for wanting grip. Now when it comes to drifting, Fast forward a couple years, I finally actually have the time and the funds to get into drifting, and I realize I have a choice. Either sell this car, stock with a cage, and try to get money for a different car, or keep it simple. So I kept this car, I already had a cage in it, and I was like, now it's time to add some suspension. I got some Megan coilovers all the way around, got them for about 600 bucks. So there's my suspension. Then. I was like, okay, what else do I need? I want some more power. I've, been, I've had this car for so long, it's time to actually add some. Ended up getting stuff online on eBay for a turbo kit. And the whole goal of building this car a turbo was to prove that you don't need a lot of money to go boosted and have fun drifting. So then, at all in, it was about $1,600 for the turbo kit and everything. That's supporting mods and everything else, like uh, adjustable fuel pressure regulator and anything like that. Clutch. If I didn't get the clutch, if I kept the stock clutch and didn't go for more boost, man, I probably could have saved another $400 right there, but it just wouldn't have lasted as long. So literally, the whole point of this car was function over form. So we ended up turboing it. Uh, got a hydro just recently, thanks to Kyle and Tyler. I got another grip royal steering wheel. Got some knuckles. The knuckles were, I think they were like $300, but an $80 core charge, so they were like $220 all in and that gave me the angle I needed. Tires for this car, good lord, tires. So, on the back, I got 185 60 R14s. Those tires only cost 38 a pop, and I usually only go through about two an event, maybe four if I'm really getting on it and it's a long event, but no, no, this is super cheap to run, and that's the whole point. Cheap to run, cheap to repair, if I wanted to fix my fender, it would be about $100. I just kind of don't see the point of it because it's a drift car right now. Uh, another hood, same thing. I could go on Craigslist. There's a guy selling one right now for 50 bucks. That's another thing, hood exit exhaust. So with the turbo kit, instead of paying $400 to go get a downpipe, I was like, well, I'm going to say pay $4 for a piece of metal, make a flange, and use some of the extra pipe we got lying around, and we make a hood exit. You can look at this car and see it's all about simplicity what works what gets the job done what can i have the most fun for the least amount of money that's this car right here this also this is just for the miatas alone i'm running half compression right now and i'm still able to drift it like come on what other car can you think of that you can run half compression and still redline the shit out of it and it's willing to drive home from the track i drive this car to the track and back home from the track doesn't get much simpler than that yeah, I don't have AC or windows or any of those fancy things, but who needs that anyways on a drift car? I got to drive this car at every event. So literally every event that I wasn't working on it put the turbo in, let's say after the turbo, 
I did one event before I did the turbo to, to get a baseline, and then we spent a couple months putting the turbo in. Once I got the turbo in the car, I've been able to make every single event we went to and drive home from every single event we went to. I'm just saying, keep it simple. There's actually an acronym, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. And that is exactly what you need to do with any racing body ever. Because also, when stuff breaks on this car, it's really easy to fix. M Mazda did a good job making it easy for someone to work on this car. I learned everything about cars through the trucks that my dad had back when I was younger, yes. But for me personally, the most I ever learned on was the RX-7 and this Miata right here. I love this car because of the fact of how reliable it has been for me. And it's just the amount of seat time I've been able to get is uh, astonishing. Um, does it need a better driver? Probably. But, <laughs> but I'm working on it. And the reason I'm working on it is because I can get to the track and drive this every single time. I guess I'm just doing like a spokes spokes ad for the Miata. I think you should all get one. I think they're super cheap. I think they're great. Uh, but, I mean, they're different. It comes with a hair, uh, hair dryer already installed. Secretly, that's what I run instead of a turbo. But... Don't tell anyone. So guys, basically what I'm trying to tell you is if you guys want to get into drifting, you need to keep it simple. Okay, that is the most important thing. This car, not simple. That car, extremely simple. But remember, simple does not mean missile. That's one thing that I always have to deal with. Uh, going to Cars and Coffee and taking this car out there. Now, you guys know Cars and Coffee. It's usually a bunch of nice cars. There's a lot of stance guys out there and things like that. So everyone sees this and I'm like, oh wow, what a piece of shit. Look at that little drift missile. It's like, it's not a missile because I want it to be nice, but for the amount of money you put into the car to make it nice, I'd rather use for functional things like the hydro or the turbo or anything like that. Something that will actually give me more happiness, I guess would be the way to put it. Some smiles per gallon. Well, and the big thing is like with you, your tires cost, what, $37? Oh, yeah. $37 so. to $42, depending on the brand. If I'm really wanting to get fancy, $55 for some Falcons. And see, that's that's dirt cheap. That's important because ultimately drifting is expensive and you want to do whatever you can to limit the cost as much as possible. And uh, other motorsports, you're going to be paying even a lot more. Like drifting is probably the cheapest motorsport you can ever get into. Yes, it's a lot of money up front trying to get the cars ready and stuff. It's a lot of work but it's also a lot more fun. And honestly, I mean, I enjoyed racing, like road racing, but drifting is just a totally different thing. And it's just, it's more like, I guess it would be the free-spirited motorsport. It's a lot more accepting to everyone's ideas and like creativity and style rather than just like an organized uh, racing body. Yeah, and that's, that's important. You know, the thing about drifting is it's a community yeah. and drifters are so different from a lot of other automotive people out there you know we tend to be very helpful we're competitive but we help our competitors you yeah. know we're just as easily going out there to go and beat each other but at the end of the day we'll go and have a few beers with each other right after you know it's not a big angry competition it's all about making friends okay drifting is not just about sliding your car sideways it's a mindset it's all about going out there having a good time and forgetting about all your problems for one minute and when you take that one minute and you're out there drifting and you're sideways or maybe you're spinning out, you're not thinking about all the problems that you've had throughout the day. You're not thinking about all the little insignificant things. All you're thinking about is, God damn, this is a lot of fun. And that's what's important. Yeah, either God damn, this is a lot of fun, or oh shit, I don't want to hit that wall. <laughs> that uh, too. It, it's all about having a good time and meeting new people. And if people are being assholes to you at the track, fuck those welcome. people. <laughs> Seriously. They ain't worth your time and just let it go. And just remember guys, the most important thing is to keep things simple because that's how you're going to get the most time and spend the least amount of money. So if you really want to get into drifting and you want to make it one of your hobbies, keep it as simple as possible. And just remember guys, simple doesn't mean missile. Good deal.